Hello FPL managers, today we have a look at the first draft for the 2022-23 season. In today's video, we go over our initial squad selection and explaining the full squad of 15 players. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as we try and hit 8k subs by the start of the new Premier League season and also click the notification bell to not miss any future uploads and with that being said, let's get into the video. So starting off with the goalkeeper for the new squad for the season, we've gone with David Raya. Brentford have some strong fixtures to start the new season, as in their first five weeks they faced Leicester, Manchester United, Fulham, Everton and Crystal Palace. Brentford's defence was fairly strong last season, ranking in the top half of clean sheets, so I do think with these nice fixtures to start the new year, and David Raya's good points per game stats of 4.0 last season, he could be a nice cheap option of 4.5 million. The next player on the team sheet is unsurprisingly Trent Alexander-Arnold, who does start off with some nice fixtures against Fulham away in game week 1. Trent of course was the top scoring defender last season on FPL with 208 total points. I do think he's probably going to be around 8 to 8.5 million pounds, but hopefully he is worth that price tag. Across last year he got himself 2 goals, 12 assists and 18 clean sheets, so if he can rack up 200 points once again in the new campaign I'll be very happy. Cancelo is the second defender in the squad to rack up 200 points as he scored 201 last year with a total of 1 goal, 11 assists and 19 clean sheets. He's probably going to see a price rise to 7 or 7.5 million pounds but he's another one that has great potential at both ends of the pitch. So with Man City's great fixtures of West Ham, Bournemouth, Newcastle Palace and Nottingham Forest as their first five, I'm expecting plenty of returns for Cancelo. And moving on to the third starting defender, I'm really excited to see how this player goes in the Premier League, it's Ivan Perisic. I was tossing up between him and Chilwell for the third starting defender slot, but I do think Spurs have slightly better fixtures from a defensive standpoint. With Southampton and Wolves both at home in the first three weeks of the season, plus Perisic's great attacking potential at both ends of the pitch as he's most likely playing a wingback role, I believe he could be one of the highest scoring defenders over the first five to six weeks. With 8 goals and 7 assists in the Serie A last year with Inter Milan, I do think Perisic is going to be a great attacking option for the Tottenham. Moving on to the midfield is now, unsurprisingly we start with Mo Salah as the first name on the team sheet. He's most likely coming in at £13 million, but the top scoring play in FPL last year is impossible to pass up on. Salah racked up 265 FPL points last year, finishing the season at £13.1 million with 23 goals, 14 FPL assists, and 17 extra points for the clean sheets, accompanied with 29 bonus points. Despite his high price, I still believe Mohamed Salah will be one of the highest owned players in the new FPL year, and for me, he's an essential pick that cannot be left out. Liverpool have some excellent fixtures to start the new season, where they face Fulham, Crystal Palace, Manchester United, Bournemouth, and Newcastle, so I would be expecting Mo Salah to be the top screen player after the first five weeks of the season. On to the second midfielder now, and it is a bit of a differential one in Kulisevsky. To capitalise on those great Spurs fixtures, we have gone with a double up from them, as obviously they do start the season with Southampton at home. Assuming that Perisic plays in a left wing back role, I do think Kulisevsky will still be getting starting minutes, and he had an excellent points per game when he was playing for Spurs at the back end of last season. Consequently, I do think his price is going to rise to 7 or 7.5 million pounds, as he recorded 5 goals and 9 assists. This means he recorded 14 attacking returns in just 15 starts for Tottenham last season, so he is definitely one that is great value. On to the third midfielder in this squad now, it is Bakayo Saka. He is one that I think will have a fairly high ownership to start the new year due to Arsenal's incredible starting fixtures. They have Palace, Leicester, Bournemouth, Fulham and Aston Villa as their first five opponents, which I think are five great fixtures for Saka to make great starts to the new season, especially with the signing of Gabriel Jesus. This will not only give Saka an increased assist potential, but Jesus did get a fair few assists for City last year, so Bakayo Saka could also see an increase in his goals output. Here's another one that I expect to be great value for the new season. As for his price, recording 11 goals and 9 assists last year is a fairly strong output. And now onto the final starting midfielder, it is yet another differential play in Pedro Neto. According to Fantasy Football Fix, Wolves have the best fixtures coming in the first 6 weeks of the new season, so I am going to be capitalising at both ends of the pitch for them. They face Leeds, Fulham, Spurs, Newcastle, Bournemouth and Southampton as their first 6 opponents, 
So apart from Spurs and game week three, they have five fixtures that are definitely worthwhile targeting. Neto was injured for the majority of last season, but came back late to get himself one goal for Wolves. And I do think since he was one of the highest scoring players for Wolves in the last couple of seasons running, he's going to be a great option for the new year. On to the forwards now, starting off with Erling Haaland. I was tossing up between going with Son, Kane or Haaland for this second premium slot coming into the new season. But since Manchester City's fixtures are so good, and I am expecting Haaland to be getting so much service, I couldn't go past him. Of course, we all know how good Haaland's goal record was in the Bundesliga, but the Premier League is a different beast, which is obviously much better than the Bundesliga. So it's going to be difficult to see how he goes over the first five, but of course due to Man City's incredible fixtures and the high amount of service he's going to be getting, I'm sure he's going to be getting amongst the goals. Apart from West Ham at home in game week one, Man City face Bournemouth, Newcastle Palace and Nottingham Forest as their next four opponents. So I do think over the first five weeks, it is debatable, but I think Haaland could be one of the highest scoring forwards. Also, by having this premium forward, it does offer me the increased flexibility to go to Kane if Haaland doesn't perform in the Premier League. Moving on now, we have gone with Ivan Tony as our second forward, as Brentford have some excellent fixtures, and actually according to Fix, have the second best fixtures out of any team in the first six weeks. With Leicester, United, Fulham, Everton, Palace and Leeds as their first six opponents, I do believe Tony can make a fast start after having a solid end to the last Premier League season. I wouldn't see Tony getting a price rise for the new year as I still expect him to be sitting at 6.5 million pounds, as he did finish last season at 6.9. He recorded 12 goals and 5 assists in his maiden Premier League season, so I'm only thinking he's going to be building on this in the upcoming campaign. And as the third starting forward, we have gone with another differential in Neil Mopé. Brighton have some great fixtures to start the new year with Manchester United, Newcastle, West Ham, Leeds, Fulham and Leicester. So if you can just bench it for Manchester United and West Ham in the first six weeks, he has some excellent starting fixtures. I would be expecting Mopé to come in at 6.5 million pounds, and for forwards at that price tag, I'm not thinking you're going to get too many with better fixtures than Brighton at the moment, apart from the likes of Ivan Tony. I could go for a promoted forward in Solanke or Mitrovic, but I just think Brighton have that good of fixtures that Mopé is probably going to be a better option over the first five or six. So now moving on to the bench, as our sub goalkeeper, we have gone with Robin Olsen from Villa. He's probably going to be coming in at £4 million, as of course Martinez will be the starting option. But Olsen did get some starting minutes last year, so I am hoping he can get a couple of games under the belt and should be a decent backup at 4.0. Looking to our backup defenders now, Max Kilman has been listed in the team. Depending on his price, I am hoping he's going to be 4.5, as he did miss a lot of his last season as he was getting benched. Since game week 28 last year, Max Kilman only started three of the remaining games, so I am hoping because of this he can sneak in at 4.5 million pounds, and he will be starting in that Wolves defence, as they did let Roman Saez go. Moving on, Alan is there as the 4.5 million pound midfielder. Depending on the other options at this price tag, I could defer from him, but he was the highest scoring player at 4.5 million pounds last year, so we're locking him in. And as the 4 million pound defender, we have gone with Gary Cahill from Bournemouth. Of course, this could be a multitude of players, but I've just gone with Cahill because he does have that experience under the belt and maybe could sneak in some starting minutes for Bournemouth. Thanks for watching today's first draft team selection for the new FPL season. If you guys want to become a channel member then click the join button down below and get featured on our members board at the end of our videos just like Philip Ash here. Also leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.